everybody. Welcome to Future Modern Newsroom. Welcome to the newsroom. Uh, today, we're going to be doing something different. We're going to be educating you guys on different types of government, and we're going to play, be playing a fun game. Um, you already know Big Baby Gandhi. I'm here with my boy Bill, my boy Adam. Um, I got my, my CEO, the Black founder, Chibu, checking in. What up, what up, Chibu? Future Modern, let's do this. The newsroom. Yo, excited to have you. And we got our special guest, Anthony. Uh, you, you, you know him on Instagram yeah. at uh, Bodacious Bikini Babe. You can follow him there. Um, yeah, we're just we were just talking about a lot of stuff lately. We're talking about the new the the war, the government. You know, just some normal adult talk because we're not ignorant rappers. We're not pu ignorant pussy rappers like you guys. But it's okay. We don't care that you're pussy and ignorant. We're gonna educate you guys, right? Um, that's what my boss told me. Yep. That's that's your job, Gandhi. Educate these fools. All right, Let them so, know. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go across all the different political ideologies. Um, and this is the question for today's class, today's sermon. Which of these political ideologies is best suited for the young 25 to 30 year old politically engaged person to, you know, craft their life in a way that they can make a change on their society? And what's best for all of us as Americans? Yeah, let's do that. And we're going to go across different ideologies. You know, luckily, our, our special guest, Ant Anthony, he's going to kind of break down what they are a little bit. And then we'll just talk about the good and negative. And then at the end, we'll do a little recap. All right. So starting off, starting off, I'm going to start with 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 the uh, alphabetically with anarchism. Anarchism is supposed to be one that says that there is no justification for any authority and seeks to abolish any institution that wants to coerce or uh, create a hierarchy. And, you know, that doesn't, you know, and that includes different types of government. So what do you guys think about anarchism? Uh, why don't we start with you, Anthony? Why don't we start with you? So, uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, anarchism is interesting. Uh, my brother, um, who is uh, an older millennial, because I guess we're talking about 25 to 30, so we're talking about kind of like the the zillennial types, the like the the crossover generation. Well, I, I, I was just I was I was say general, yeah. just the average person. I just picked yeah. that at age because yeah. I like to pick on them. I like to pick that, on them. That, that is like the zoomers and like the you know the first the zillennial really finally maturing, yeah. But um but yeah, I guess anarchy like my brother fucked with anarchism for a long time. He's like, uh, but he was like born in the eighties. He's an older millennial. Um, it's great if like if you love like farming, um, if you if you just like kind of want to fuck off and go into the forest, um, or if you want to like spend, if you want to have like eighty extra meetings at your job, uh, it's a good. It's also a good method. Um, because uh, no one... of there's no coercion, right? There's no one authority. Yeah. You gotta have eighty meetings. Yeah, I mean, if you look at any anarchist group, it's always like because there is no hierarchy, like coercing anybody. Everyone's uh, very free. Feels like free to think and do um, as they please, but they do so harmoniously. Uh, but if you need something like, um, uh, like in the long term, if you need something like insulin or like a uh, birth certificate uh, or like electricity. Uh, anarchism might, might, not be, might not be the best, especially for our um, decreasingly individualist generation. Yeah, so yeah. and then uh, a... some examples of anarchy would be like the French Revolution during the reign of terror, right? That's one example of anarchy. Yeah. Well, how about Albania in 1997 when they lost all their money due to uh, pyramid schemes and then they fell into a, a state anarchy, right? Um, how about you, Chibu? Which, what, what's your opinion on anarchism? Um, anarchism is cool. Uh, I feel like what you were kind of describing sounds more like primitivism. Are we gonna Are we gonna get to? Yeah, I think we. Um, no, I think that's uh, actually. I don't think we're gonna get there. So please. Um. Well, I guess primitivism maybe could be considered a kind of anarchism that focuses on deindustrialization. Um, but you know, there are definitely anarchists who 
uh, love their insulin and electricity as well. Um, there was a, a like principality in Italy, I think, like during the 1400s, called uh, Cospia, and they had no uh, like official government, and you know they did pretty well for a while, and so they got taken over. I think the biggest that kind of highlights the biggest problem for anarchism is like uh how do you defend the polity how do you uh you know if you need to establish borders or uh maintain a, a military and and uh, resist people that you know might want you know might not you know want anarchism that are uh around you so uh, i feel like that's been the problem it's experienced in the past we have uh places like rohava that would be like a modern uh example of uh, uh, a polity or a region making some kind of attempt at anarchism um so yeah it's interesting something to look into well, so maybe because of america because we are the nation's uh militaristic arm as well as uh you know have such a large border Maybe anarchism is not the most practical ideology. I'm sure a lot of young people will still cling to it for its uh, uh, idealist, idealistic, um, you know, ways of identifying that may make them feel better because they're so corny themselves. Like, oh, I'm so corny, so I'm going to say I'm an anarchist. Yeah, but to me, that's very unserious. So, um. I, I guess we can circle back, but my take is anarchism. You're not living in reality with us. Come join us in America where we're the vanguard of global capitalism and where with some confidence, we can actually take the reins of the, one of the largest world powers in history and create something great that allows for an exchange of uh, multiple cultures, ethnicities, as well as uh, you know, sharing a, a distribution of the, the, the wealth uh, we create a majority of the wealth of the planet. Um, that's just my little speech on why I think anarchism is unserious. But just to keep it rolling along, I'm really I'm having a great time, guys. I don't know about you, um, but just to keep it rolling. Also, along, a great also a great thing about anarchism. If you do, you know, want to give in to capitalism, um, all those like Etsy like patches and stickers and enamel pins with like Hello Kitty or like the minions like wearing black block clothes and like right saying a cab or whatever you can sell that like for profit so it's pretty good uh it's pretty crazy you don't just have to like barter it uh for like mead or whatever the fuck people are like i don't know what the fuck people eat like yeah. in anarchists communes yeah very unserious ideology to me yeah. all right now let's just just to keep the, the ball rolling next we got authoritarianism Authoritarianism concludes like monarchy, absolute monarchism, dictatorships, imperialism, um, totalitarianism. Uh, authoritarianism is a system where you reject any type of plurality in politics and you have one strong central power to preserve the status quo. Um, yeah. Um, this is not to be confused with with oligarchism, where there's a group of people who may have competing interests and power. Yes, yeah, so what do you guys think about authoritarianism? This includes, you know, like like kings. Some might even call Vladimir Putin an authoritarian. You know, what about uh, Li Li Yun Li Yuan Ku? The Singaporean leader. That's got to be the goaded uh, authoritarian, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Highest return on investment in terms of uh, expansion in wealth and GDP over, you know, the number of people killed or oppressed. You got to be one of the top top ones. If that's the best trick. Um, I don't see there's some there are a few good things about totalitarianism. It depends how you you know your preferred one, right? But let's say you had a king instead of um what we have now, a supposed democracy. In my opinion, America, we don't have a democracy. We have a, a bureaucratic oligarchy, 
right? So the people that are in the State Department, the FBI, the CIA, you know, um, the, these people, it doesn't matter who you vote for president or who controls the House or Senate, those same people will have the same jobs and guide our foreign policy and domestic affairs, right? So the thing is, um, the idea of a democracy is that we can take people out of, of power if and by holding them accountable, we can vote for someone else. But the people who really run things in our country, you can't vote them out. They're part of a the, the endless cycle. Like someone like Dick Cheney was in the State Department for 30 years before he ever became vice president. And we all knew that he was the one pulling the strings during the that tenure because George W. Bush was too sweet. He's too sweet of a guy to really... He was a compassionate capitalist, you know. Um, he he was he was reading from the Bible and blowing kisses to us. So we like George W. Bush, you know. He was a just he just wanted to paint his flowers, you know. Um, but so the thing is, since you can't hold those people accountable, we don't really operate under a democracy. We operate under a bureaucratic oligarchy. Now, someone like a king that might be actually be better for the U.S. Because think about it this way: now you know who you can hold accountable. And the long history of the U.S. was that there were always these people in the shadows, and they were always from Ohio, if you look into it. Like the teapot scandal, they were all from Ohio. So you have all these corrupt politicians from Ohio who have been controlling our government for, for hundreds of years, really. If you had a king, at least when things are bad, people can know who to point to. And they say, this king is gone. Now we need a new king. And it's a much, um, it's one of the best uh, arguments against propaganda. Really, if you have one king. So there's a lot of good things to that that I think could actually I think I think that a, a king is going to be rethought of. And, um, you know, a lot of people are scared of fascism and totalitarians, but it's something you need to fight against the propaganda of modern modern life. You know, and I think uh, over the next century, people will start to understand that. How do you get rid of the king, though, when he goes crazy or gets dementia well, or... we all take him to the town square and we we uh chop his head off like in the french revolution that's the one guy but then we have anarchism no then the well then the guy who kills him who who wields the axe he is our new king he is our new king now like in game of thrones okay i mean May as well try it, right? Hasn't been tried before. Well, the, the reason yeah. for that is, uh, you know, there are people who say that it's not really about the bureaucracy, the type of ideology, who's right, who's wrong. It's about having good people who are doing things for the good of the people. And we've never really had that in America. <laughs> you know, we've never really had like a true, like maybe George Washington. Maybe that was the last time we had it, you know? No, I think there are a lot of people in America who love this country and and work for it, you know, JFK. Well, I'm just talking about like the leader, like the president or whatever. I got to give yeah. props. Okay, I say he he was that. We can who we can who? say then. No, no, I'm 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 open to hearing it. Who are you talking about? JFK, John F. Kennedy, John F. Kennedy. That state, the State Department, that bureaucratic oligarchy were the ones who had him assassinated. Yeah. He, I mean, he was the one that didn't want the deep state. I, the deep, I mean, people want to act like, oh, there's no deep state. Oh, uh, like, you know, but yeah, of course, like QAnon's a big joke, but like, oh, there's no deep state. There's no CIA. There's no NSA. There's no Department of Homeland Security, which was invented only 20 years ago, um, like, which has been alive longer than a lot of the people were given advice to. Um, so it's like, uh, it's fucked up. Um, That's our intelligence of, community. They call it our intelligence yeah, community. Yeah, but you know we need that in America because um, we don't have. I think a lot of your. I think when we talk about like populism and stuff, uh, in a lot of political circles, I see like it seems like Americans really need a Napoleonic figure. They need like an American Napoleon. They need someone to like guide them with populism and aim our sort of militaristic tendencies towards like public good um and that's all well and good but like who the fuck is going to do that you know like who are we going to who are we going to get who we're, we're not creating behind, the, like, the type of uh, mavericks and leaders that we used to um just speaking even, as someone who knows american history like someone like a teddy roosevelt the jfk um the, i mean this with all respect these people come from the elite themselves but yeah. they decide to betray their class and we don't have the same type of class traders we used to. Yeah, no, even the military is like getting angry about this. Cause like, um, 
well, the military and higher education, I should say, because like after like uh, you know our, you know all these years of no child left behind, standardized testing, people are like the like, people get to college, everyone's mad like why don't these kids know how to do anything except take tests? They don't have any critical thinking skills. They haven't read like half of the books you would expect them to read, not even like 25%, et cetera. Um, and in the military, yeah, there's still like, really all we're training is people who take orders. We are not training like, like yeah, Mavericks. We're not training the the Vanguard, the Renegades. Um, we're not training like, like well, kind of yeah, authoritar authoritarianism, like, if you want to, th if if it were up to me, I'd want like a nice big, like sexy authoritarianism that's still kind of beneficial to the public, like Gaddafi or Chavez, like a lot of flash, a lot of pomp. Um, yeah. Well, you have somebody like, like the the Sultan in Oman. He's like the most yeah. uh, charitable. Uh, uh, they had a monarchism for a long time, and he decided that okay, he's gonna keep the monarchy but as a way to like preserve oil rights for the people of his country and not sell it off yeah. to some other family and things like that um he wouldn't have been able to do that if he had to fight a deep bureaucracy um one thing that's understated you know maybe um i don't know how we can communicate to some of our core audience but a big problem with the u.s government isn't necessarily like one guy at the top like trump or whatever it's um it's a type of person they produce at their elite institutions and think tanks that are careerists that know that um, the way to get maintain their power is to create a lot of connections within the bureaucracy. So, like, I'll give some examples, right? Like, like the uh, assistant to the head of the, the State Department, the treasurer of the State Department, um, the the committee member board of the uh, FBI. You know, like these jobs, they end up becoming. The people who later run for uh like let's say secretary of state you know um one example i'll give you is like pete Buttigieg. where did he come from right well one thing is that he was the chairman the like, DNC, well he was a chairman of the dnc for eight years prior to him all of a sudden yeah. popping out of nowhere and you would say well what's the point of that that doesn't help anyone no that's actually a, a big deal because he was doing a lot of the bureaucratic work for who gets power and who shakes hands who uh, has to trade in what favor for what vote you know, and that's where the real levers of power are. Um, I don't think it's right that the people have to follow up and learn and read all the Wikipedia footnotes for how power works. There should just be one guy they can blame. That's more yeah. fair and honest as our people get dumber and dumber. It's only right to have a fascist king because our people are stupid. How are they going to hold, you know, like what? They're going to be Katie Porter. They're going to pull out a whiteboard and show the tax rate. That's not realistic. We have, you know what we produce really well? Angry, outraged mobs, right? In America, we have all these outraged mobs. Let them be our government. That's the type of government. Yeah, mob, mob, is is that, uh, do we have that under the list? Is like mob, mob rule? Is that, isn't that democracy? No, I'm just yeah, kidding. That dem That's uh, populism, isn't it? Um, it's well, a type you know, of populism. Let me, let me keep going. Yeah, yeah, um, go Okay, so after after authoritarianism, they got communitarianism. I never heard of that. Skip that, um, bro. Huh? Yeah. It's, 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 I don't it's, think anyone does that. Go to the next one. Yeah. Then you got communism. Let's, whoa, let's whoa, go. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Communism. Okay, so it's just defined as a left-wing, socio-political, philosophical, and economic ideology within the socialist movement whose goal is to establish a communist society, a socioeconomic order centered around common ownership of the means in production, distribution, and exchange that allocates products to everyone in society. So it means that everyone is entitled to a part of what the society creates. Yes, communism. I'm cool with that. You know, we got a, a whole bunch of uh, examples. We got Trotskyism. We got uh, hoax, hoaxism. We got MLM, Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. Uh, we got Trotskyism. All right. We got anarcho communism, my personal favorite. Okay, okay. Oh, no shout out. Shout out the anarcho prefix. 
What do you guys have to say for communism? What do you guys have to say for it? Sounds good in theory. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, all, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of this comes back to how do we get there, right? Like, you know, an ideology is just that. It's an ideology. It's ideal. So it's really like, what are the, the tactics and what are the practices um, that we're going to use to get to that end goal if we're assuming that that is even that even is the end goal but um i mean i think that that makes sense right that's in everyone's kind of best interest to uh have direct ownership uh over what what creates the wealth as opposed to having it trickle down to them um yeah, my since, thing you, since you just talk, touched that i'll go straight to socialism so socialism is one that is characterized by a social ownership of the means of production and is very similar. It's just the next step to communism. Okay, never mind. I guess I didn't need to interrupt. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I guess what I was going to say is my thing is uh, who, I don't want to wait for the government to provide communism. It's like, what can we do from the bottom up what can we do as the the next generation to uh you know make our economy more equitable um you know make sure there's you know more opportunity for people to live in and and thrive in different ways and things like that well you know after communism you got my favorite conservatism okay uh, i'm a lower c conservative i'm not a republican but some of my favorites is civic conservatism, okay? That's where you engage in, where you put civic duty ahead of everything else, all right? Then you got, uh, then you got um, national conservatism, which just means you believe in conserving the country. Then you have um, environmental conservatism, right? But overall is described, defined as a uh, social and political philosophy that aims to preserve traditional institutions, practices, and values. Um, maybe because of uh, my cynical American nature, I feel like making sure your public institutions are effective and work is part of conservatism. But yeah, I can speak to this more. Do you guys have anything else on conservatism? I mean, um, uh, uh, the big, I'll just say that the problem with conservatism is who says that our traditional values are ones that we want to conserve, right? We got to, we got to look at those with the critical eye um, with, you know, some rationality and, and some empiricism and say, is this value good for us or not? And then if it's good for us, sure, we can conserve it. But if it's not, then we, we shouldn't conserve it. We should throw it out. Yeah. I mean, at least I'm going to, since I'm a, I'm a dual citizen, I'm a U.S. citizen, and my family uh, came here in the 80s from Poland, so I got Polish citizenship, because uh, Poland is citizenship by blood, unlike the U.S., which is citizenship by birth. Um, yeah, like in America, I mean, the first one, I bet those three categories, first one, civic duty, last one, environmentalism, just cross those off. Like, we're not, no American's gonna, like, do that shit. Like, I no, it's like not, it's not have Americans don't care enough. Um, the ones who do care, like, did you see? I like, I really don't want to bring up the whole like uh, gender hysteria because I'm really tired of talking about it. But did you see that uh, the guy in like the the, um, the Roman suits showing up to the uh, like the school meeting, like the PTA meeting, and like talking <laughs> at it? So it's just like it's just like stupid stuff. We don't have any traditions in America, like. Okay, there's like a we there's a little bit of history in like the East Coast and Midwest, because um, at least in the settler colonial state. But like, I mean, like aside from Native Americans, there's no fucking history. Like, okay, like Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. What the hell was there there aside from the Native Americans? Like, what the hell is uh, there? Well, like, like witch burnings, um, is, uh, <laughs> eating people alive in the woods. I think they're that's. that's that's all from like the last like 300 years though like otherwise it's just like nothing like and america really does like have um a week yeah we do i mean i guess we do have a strong like national image so the second one national conservatism 
Americans are going to definitely line up for. Uh, but like participating in civic duty, I mean, talk to any American getting jury duty notices. That's not it's not happening. And yeah, I don't uh, think anybody likes conservatism. Yeah, or any or if anybody or anybody who's been on unemployment has to file their uh, job search listing every week, etc. Um, yeah, it just sucks. And environment, no one gives a shit about that in America. We got plenty of environment to ruin. Still, so um, second one uh, we seem to see a lot of already in America. I feel because uh, just in a very lazy way. Um, compared to like Poland where there is like a Catholic church. So it's more of like a ethno religious kind of traditional like background to this conservative like ideology. So uh, the church basically gets to decide uh, through like, however the conservative party wants the, the controlling party for the past eight years wants to spread it out amongst the public. Yeah. Usually through the Catholic church yeah. itself too. So it sucks in that case too. Yeah, I don't think conservatism is pro providing anything for the what we need in America, uh, because I think we're we're trying to actually get away from our past traditions. We yeah. we're actually better off finding ways to resolve and move on from our past traditions, like Germany. I mean, that's why I'm such a big proponent of reparations. It's nothing to do with the money and stuff. It's just like we just need to, we just need to move on. Not not even a negative way. We just need to. It's it's really the one thing holding us back. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. holding me back from loving loving on my white brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? It's it's uh, and like it is very frustrating because it's like yeah, of course you can ask a lot of questions like how do we implement reparations like that's a whole discussion they're all valid questions too like the yeah. stuff in california doesn't seem like it's gonna happen like it definitely seems like everyone's gaming the system there yeah and it's like also like like for instance there, like there I, needs to be something there you know even I, if it's like a i'm sorry and you and all black people get free krispy kreme donuts for the rest of the day. <laughs> it just needs to be a, a, a sincere apology is what i'm trying to get at yeah no for sure i mean um our fail of our failure like to like for real integration uh real reconstruction after the civil war that's that needs to well, be you paid just for. pop up so many places at the root of our politics right the what pop up you just see that issue pop up in so many places yeah. at the root of our pol politics and it's always cynically used to manipulate it manipulate us into you know preventing one preventing us from uh working together creating a a super consensus you know, in a democracy, you want a super consensus, not just a yeah. Party. And well, start Martin Luther King said there was two Americas. What are they? Um, you know, the the land of the the free, and the the other America, and um, Peter Temlin, uh, MIT economist, uh, re brings up this idea, uh, basically saying that the reason that we don't have uh, you know, social programs in America is because of, uh, you know, racism and our our history with it and, and basically people not wanting the other side uh, to get it as well. But so we that's what like, in America. They're dysfunctional. Right. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> the, the manner in which they're implemented is cruel. Yeah. Yeah, well, I can't. People's I can't relationship to the government is, is of like a abusive parent that's yeah, why i don't and, talk about japan and sweden because those are much more racially homogenous uh countries with completely different histories uh it makes it makes a lot more sense that they want to take care of their people um because they don't have this this trauma that they're walking with and you know the like like you were mentioning the u.s generates a lot of uh the wealth that then uh europe can use to to fund its social services well you know what would you say there because like one of the questions was in america we're not a heterogeneous we're not a homogenous society so um could you say would you say that it makes sense to try to emulate uh, some of the countries you named like japan or the nordic countries given our our demographic makeup 
I we got to have reparations first. Um, well, right. Yeah, well, that's why it's so necessary, right? It would resolve a lot of those issues. What would you say, are there any ideologic ideologies or political tools that may be preferable for a heterogeneous society? Democracy, right? Representative democracy. No? <laughs> we try we tried (laughs) you 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 wish you pray and wish for that at night we just need more of it more direct democracy less less bureaucracy that is yeah i mean a bigger emphasis on like for instance in europe like one thing i will give to like latin america and europe like other places that are like experimenting with like uh, systems not unsimilar to our own in many ways since i mean we're both i mean a a lot of our countries just bit in the americas just based it off of like france and europe during that time of you know revolution liberalism whatever and then they just mostly copied america um and uh shit what was i gonna say um well, we were talking about heterogeneous society. Yeah, and I would say, like, in any society, I guess, like, uh, in any society, homogenous or heterogeneous, like, uh, a good way, and this kind of goes into, like, a, w- a way for helping pay for reparations and things like that, like, nationalizing things. Um, if you really do want to protect, like, your population, make sure that everyone gets, uh, everyone at least, like, who's a national or permanent resident of your I mean or like working or permanent resident of your country gets access to these resources like any human being should and well, you can that, use this that's actually a good it. segue to our next next yeah. ideology it's called corporatism yes. not to be confused with corporate capitalism Corp- yeah. this is what we actually have we have corporatism corporatism is a collectivist ideology which, ad- which advocates the organization of society by the corporate group's uh, decisions such as agriculture, labor, military, business, science, or guild associations, aka lobbies, on the basis of their common interests. Uh, this this was meant to be an alternative to both free market economies and show socialist economies. Yep, yep. Yeah, so we have corporatism. We're like When they talk about the guilds, that's like the AMA or PHRMA, like different lobbyists of of uh like the medical association you know they control the number of medical license there license there are and make it harder um and uh uh you know we already know like okay it's like what you were talking about with nationalizing industries right so the u.s funds a bunch of let's say for example big pharma they fund all of the 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 top 10 countries top 10 pharma companies and the profits from those companies make up like about 15 20 percent of the u.s economy anyway so if we're funding it that much, and realistic, realistically, do we even need to have competing research firms trying to find cures for cancer? Like, it actually makes more sense to pull all your resources together, right? If the goal is yeah. to find cures for cancer and things like that. The, the Chinese seem to be having success, more success than, I mean, like, what have we invented in the past 20 even, years? Even, like the fucking, even Cuba, the fighter vaccine. jet. Cuba was able to create a COVID vaccine the same time we did. Yeah. And it's like China, they're able to make like fusion react, like nuclear fusion reactors and like quantum supercomputers and shit like that. And like we are Our barely departments keeping... are not are not up to par with China's. I'm sorry. Our science and engineering departments are not up to yeah. par with China's. Yeah, we stopped investing after the space race. And then we never and then once neoliberalism and Reagan came in, like we were like yeah, no, we're never going back to that. Investing in schools, investing in the the top anything, pharma companies spend more money on marketing than they do on research and development. Yeah, and uh, we're one of the only countries that does direct to con- consumer pharma marketing. Yes, uh, I have uh, my dad's best friend from Poland uh, ended up moving to Australia uh, with his wife, who's also Polish, and she's a pharmacist in Australia. She came visit us like 15 years ago. She started what it was her first time in America. She turned on the TV and she was like in shock, like like in disgust, as if like she had just seen like like children like drinking on TV or something on like Jerry Springer or something like 
or like you know like uh she was just like i can't believe you guys are have fucking pharmaceutical medicine ads why do you have ads for medicine don't you like which also never made sense to me growing up i'm like thankfully someone is saying that yeah like yeah why am i asking my doctor for medicine they are going to already know to give me and prescribe to me whether it's they because i actually need it or because some lobbyist or somebody convinced them that i need it etc no i love i love pharmaceutical commercials because i know my doctor what i need if i hear the commercial and it and it tells me the same symptoms that i'm having then i mean i needed that information it was really important <laughs> uh, yeah, why do we need doctors they like don't that? look like any of the other commercials either like you'll be watching like a, someone drive down like a you know like listening listening to techno music driving to sell a car commercial and then you have like a suicidal woman in a field of lilies <laughs> it's like a weird vibe you know if it's if you were watching a movie it's that's why whenever they do dystopic scenes they always do drug commercials even on like the rick and morty uh yeah the galactic tv yeah it's got a very like like um J- uh, dread whether you want to be the stallone or carl urban version but uh like a judge dread kind of paul verhoven kind of feel to it yeah. yeah and like it's yeah like remember uh do you remember yes the it was it, there was a women's reproductive health medicine yeah they had this made famous ad on in the 2000s yes got more infamous because it turned there was a big uh Law, there were some weird side effects. I know one girl who was part of this questionable class action suit, but fuck them, they got the money, so you know, let them get the check. Um, whether it was actually hurting their bodies or not, they make enough money. Um, but like the commercial is just like it starts off, it's like three like middle class, to, like upper middle class, like women socializing at this cool like party up by a pool somewhere in like California, like Southern California. And they're just talking normally. And then they're just like, well, yeah, you haven't heard about Yaz? And like one of them, I guess, is also like a doctor, like because they're like congratulating her. And then she just like, they code switch completely from just like normal human conversation. Like, did you see that last night? Oh, Brad, last night when he, when he spilled his drink, et cetera. And it's like, yeah, Yaz is a new, like a non, uh, non-invasive method for uh, female reproductive health. Uh, taking yes can uh, help you know can cause some hormonal discrepancies etc etc shit like that it's the weirdest commercials um that one there was like a bean it was just like a a sad bean just like it would just be black and white and then it would turn into color it's just all these weird fuck and or like seeing like t-shirts and the old magazine ads for like oxycodone you know what it is before even they were like we have to kind of calm down on those yeah it's because the laws for those things is they can't explicitly say, say that the drug works or that the drug is going to do something to make them better. So they have to show someone like like who sad all of a sudden starts smiling. They can't say that the drug oh. is actually going to treat, you know what I mean? So that's that's why they're doing all that. But if you look at it, it's created some of the most like artistic and creative, like, uh, you know, like absurdist. It's created some of the most absurdist imagery we have in modern life and it's like it's it's always going to be reused because it's so like impactful it's impactful combination of art and like of visuals and and sounds and stuff like that you know all right uh well just to keep it going the next one here after corporatism we got democracy i feel like we shouldn't even waste time on democracy (laughs) democracy is like a big l right no remember remember that article from like a year or two ago that was just like your vote doesn't count like they did a study and like your vote just doesn't like scientists have shown like your vote probably doesn't count like almost certainly um and no one was like oh this is a crisis for democracy we should study this more everyone was like yeah we already know that and they're still telling you like go vote go vote no my whole thing with democracy is people shouldn't vote like people should be discouraged from voting so that the people who care the most get the highest signal. We gotta we gotta start experimenting with democracy. We gotta do sortition. Sortition is is swag. Just choose random people. I think you know that that's statistically gonna give you the average of what everyone thinks of. So um, definitely try that. Um, 
quadratic voting, uh, even even ranked choice voting. Like you know, we just gotta we just gotta shake it up. We gotta we gotta make a, a 21st century democracy. That's that's really the problem with it. Yeah, we got an old fucking constitution. It's like 300 years old. Uh, most of Europe have updated, and Latin America and other countries have updated their constitutions at this point. Uh, Massachusetts, we tried. Um, we had a referendum on, uh, Chief, what was it called? The second choice uh, vote, right? Uh, yeah, rank, rank choice. Yeah, which I've seen in like Argentina and Brazil and Peru, et cetera. Or some, I, I believe those countries. And it's like, yeah, of course we should have that. And people still voted it down like 60, 40. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we we, like we discussed this. We don't have a democracy. Uh, every, yeah, we don't. Yeah. Um, a lot of the things we vote for, it doesn't happen. We voted... Uh, uh, anti-war president three terms in a row uh starting in 2008 and we never we only get into continuous wars after that so uh, you know even as something as simple as that so we don't really have a representative democracy uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna keep moving because i'm so annoyed yeah see such an l i can't believe i wasted my breath on it well then there's environmentalism I'm not gonna waste my breath either yeah all right next one i'm i'm really surprised they have it as one of the categories they have they have identity politics Identity politics is that a, is that a whole identitarianism as a whole category? They call it identity politics, but I like that because it's very now it is its own ideology because it's bigger than capitalism or socialism. It's identity politics. They define it as a political approach where people of a race, nationality, religion, gender, sexual orientation, social background, social class, or other identifying factors develop political agendas based on their identity and deeply connected with the idea that some groups in society are oppressed and begins with analysis of that oppression. Wow. I really hate that. <laughs> I noticed that they didn't even include uh, economic class, just social class. It, it also means that if you're, if you're the uh, like Indian or like Korean daughter of like a dentist in a town with like a uh, 68,000 like median income, like uh, you are the same the as like one. a black you are the same as a black person or like Dominican from Spanish Harlem or like, uh, like, uh, you know, North DC, et cetera. Yeah. So like, yeah. Um, I, I can see how this ideology is really valid. If you're a middle-class POC who needs to think you're uh, oppressed. And I can see how that is also derailing uh, so much of modern politics. The fact that they gave it a whole category is actually really depressing. Um, yeah, Min 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 Kaling is one. Um, I shouldn't be upset, but I don't know. I know Chibu loves it. Chibu loves identity politics. He eats it up. That's all he thinks all that's all that matters. Um I think identity politics is a pejorative. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think uh anarchism is, is the real identity politics. Wow. That's crazy. Do you mean that like it's sort of like it's an it's like uh sort of like an anti um how should I put the, uh and because there's also the other thing about idpol like especially like when you're white you don't want to sound like condescending obviously talking about idpol but that's also because of idpol because it's already putting this it's whole a powerful, thing like powerful ideology yeah so um but so it's, I'm I'm gonna get fucked either way but um. Uh, but I guess like uh, in the sense like it removes the dialogue about class. I guess that's the easiest yeah. way I can put it. Yeah, well, I've only shut seen, it down. I've be like, no, we have to talk. Me. We have to talk about like uh, we have to talk about like intersex people. We have to talk about black people. We have to talk about like um, indigenous women first before we can talk about any of these issues, which also involve them, but really need to be dealt with class first. Otherwise, sorry. Yeah. Well, no, I was going to say I've only ever seen identity politics used as a distraction from class issues. I've never once seen it um, advocate for or advance the rights of any minority group ever. Not once. I can't think of one example. So, like, what, you got a holiday? You got Juneteenth? Is that it? That's all that, that's all that identity politics could do? <laughs> I uh Chibu, did you were you saying something earlier? I, I I just want to make sure I didn't interrupt you. Oh, I said is reparations identity politics. Is reparations identity? Um, 
Not really, because that's, it's, that's not, still class. it's not only ADOS. It's not only American descendants of slaves who are advocating for it. Yeah, I um, think it depends. Actually, it, it could be because one of the parts of that definition is that it's it starts with an analysis of of a uh, oppression. So you could say it could be. Oppression is is good. I like that part of it. I actually don't like that part of it. Why can't we start from a position of strength? I'm actually I I take from I'm gonna go in the middle here. I'm gonna be like, of course it's good to show strength. Of course it's good to like look at identity and like all that stuff critically but then to just keep like keep the argument at that stage like uh, i think chibu said like um uh basically like debating this before you can move forward um well like if you just keep it at that in america it seems like we're just stuck at that stage and like gandhi said like it hasn't helped anybody uh since trayvon and everything like what has happened in the last 10 years like has anything happened with the police has anything gotten better for any uh, like minority group in America that, that wasn't already doing well? The model minorities that were do, already doing well before, like nothing has changed. Um, and yet we pay more and more lip service to it every day. Um, it's, a, yeah. it's a huge industry. And yeah. any huge industry, it's a huge grift. You got DEI departments, you got nonprofits, not for profits. Uh, you, you know, you got the whole grant ecosystem. You got it. NGO, you got it. NGOs. Yeah. Do you guys watch White Lotus? I keep no. hearing about it. I hear it's really good. Is it actually good? Or are people just saying that? It's got Chris Moltisanti in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's the and, biggest. And uh, Coolidge from uh, the guest movies. Yeah. Everyone Have you seen the TV? Out. So at the end of season one, they talk about this. They talk about how if you want to join a nonprofit, you're basically just raising money to pay your own salary. <laughs> so it's a cycle of people that don't do anything. And not only do they not help their cause, they create resentment by how cringe they try to make their own cause seem more uh, more in need of money than others. And uh, basically, it, it's about 20% of the U.S. economy are, are nonprofits. Uh, so you can only imagine uh, what a waste, what a waste that is. It's they're getting paid to divide us and make us hate each other, basically. And then they get to walk around this the world thinking that they're the good people. Yeah, I would like to see if there is any actual recording of it. If there isn't, I wouldn't be surprised because that would probably be intentional. But like how much of that 20 percent also is just like either 100 percent or almost 100 percent like lobby backed or just you know special interests lobby whatever formula i liked how um the term guild was used for for a lobby like uh like it's <laughs> being like an assassin or like a blacksmith like that's the new that's the new thing you're, you're a lobbyist now you're a consultant yeah i would say it would be a, a majority right because yeah. think about i'm thinking even like um like if if I'm I'm pro disability rights and okay, you okay, know, let's say I'm pro veterans, right? I'm pro veterans, my group, my guild, then the, John, John then the Stewart. yeah, and then the and I'm a politician, I need the the military votes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask my my benefactor to make a donation um at my fundraiser to the guild of the veterans, and in return they can guarantee me that their that their union, the veteran, or even a labor union, right, or teachers union, whatever, they can guarantee me votes. So literally, they're buying votes. So our poli our polit our political ideology of corporatism actually also exists to prop up our economy. <laughs> you know, if you think about it, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. No. It it's it uh, like that's also like a comment I was gonna say like if capitalism, what we previously covered, like or corporatism or whatever it doesn't work out for you because you're too like you're like i care about like human dignity i care about like life being worth living or you're on the other hand you're like i want to have sex with women in college uh by virtue signaling i want to like barack obama did himself he admitted in his own biography that he was like yeah i just you know i just talk about marxism just to like get pussy yeah. and then like um just like all that shit yeah if you don't if you don't want to be like a corporate 
you know, lame nerd like Pete Buttigieg, no, go into P identity politics because then you can be like and work in HR and work at these NGOs. And you don't have to know anything. Like, you could just you could just talk been... about how your group of people was hurt. And that's all you have to really talk about. You don't have to present any solutions. Yeah. Well, that that one got me all all upset. Okay, next we got it's a it's a rel it's a relevant one. It's a relevant. One. Yeah, it, I actually like that they included there now. Now I feel better about the world. <laughs> all right, next we got liberalism. Liberalism is a political and moral philosophy based on the rights of the individual, liberty, consent of the governed, political equality, and equality before the law. The law. I'm just gonna say it. It's very outdated. Liberalism is what from like the 1700s, like outdated. Yeah, that's kind of like liberalism. Before, yeah. is, bro, only thing I like more than democracy is liberalism. Oh, you're one of those. <laughs> Yo, bro. You know what's even better than liberalism? Neoliberalism. Oh, okay. The, great, the greatest political philosophy of all time. But Chibu, you haven't instantly provided a one sentence definition of neoliberalism. It can't possibly be something that's real. Neoliberalism is just whatever's going on right now. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> right now, yeah. I did. I remember asking that question once in grad school. I was like, I mean, what is it? We keep reading it. Like, I, we, I don't know. And then, like, basically, like, your answer I learned over time as I became less naive and less brainwashed. Like, oh, yeah, it's just, ever, like, deregulation, uh, privatization, et cetera. Global. Well, it's funny enough that even the definition of neoliberalism, it says that the defining features of neoliberalism in thought and practice have been the subject of substantial scholarly debate. That's how they define it. <laughs> That's how powerful neoliberalism is. You know, that might be the actual answer, to be honest. It's like... Um, it's so powerful that you can't even define it. it. It's the prevailing one, you know? It's the winner. It's like a gin. It's like a... Or like some kind of like... Like a bot... Like formless alien that can just like sneak into as like a gas or like a, a shadow or something just just even their me. their like their fake definition is neoliberalism is a term used to signify the late 20th century political reappearance of 19th century ideas associated with free market capitalism after it fell into decline following world world war ii so it's just describing a time period it's not even that's how pervasive neoliberalism is. It just talks yeah. about the time period. Neoliberalism is very closely connected to postmodernism. Um, I think it's it's a, opposed to conservatism. That's one uh, way that I think about it is neoliberalism is like, you know, conservatism is obviously like we have values, we protect these values. Neoliberalism is like no values. Everything is just based on what people want, what people's choices are. Um, and, you know, basically whatever their desires are in the moment um, and fulfilling that uh, individual, um, just just self, individual self-fulfillment is the highest order imperative in a, a, a neoliberal society. Whether, and that really, sorry. Oscar. Oh, just whether that's your, uh, you know, your moral, uh, um preferences whether that's your um uh, identity based preferences whether that's your sexual preferences um the the defense of of that is the highest is the highest order um priority i mean i'm right now it's like neoliberalism is the clear winner oh yeah it's that's all there is i mean aside from like trying to like kind of doing it differently like yeah there's not much else uh, you know what let me just go through the rest of the list while we're here so then after that we got um one of my favorites libertarianism <laughs> uh, it's it's probably even more far-fetched than anarchism at this point i just want to hear it yeah i would love to hear uh, it. its definition is that political philosophy that upholds liberty as a core value so even that's a mealy mouthed kind of definition because they'll cave, you know, the minute you can enact more gun laws on minorities, all of a sudden they're not libertarian anymore. Uh, please, please, bro, I'm not libertarian. I'm just anti-authoritarian. Well, you know, libertarian originally meant anarchist, like 
left, like, you know, anarcho communist communes, uh, cooperatives, things like that. And then it got brought, cause it was, it was a French term. And then when it got brought over to America, it was more like, don't tread on me. Um, you know, I can own an, I can own a nuclear weapon and, and that's fine. Uh, that, that became the interpretation of what they meant of what, uh, libertarian means, but libertarian means to me that like, I can just be my own boss. Like I'm on that Lysander Spooner, um, Benjamin Tucker, like, uh, fucking, um, Hayek, what's uh, like earner, like wave of libertarianism where it's like, well, I, I can't just be on an Island, but like, let's, let's gang up and come together to serve our own self-interest and not have to worry about oh is this company gonna give me a job or is this government gonna get the vote in the right way and just start setting shit up for ourselves that's like it's like the it's like the gangster it's like the gangster ideology yeah it's like it is it is kind of like scarface like mexican or colombian cartel kind of mentality yeah Uh, all right. Well, from there we got. Um, except it's for do- except it's for dorks or pedophiles. In that right. Case. Yeah. Well, that's that's all that's all fine. That's that explains a lot of these ideologies anyway. Yeah. For yeah. John McAfee. John McAfee. Oh, yeah, R.I.P. R.I.P. No, he was he was actually <laughs> he was a real one. All right. From there you got nationalism. It's not bad. It can be good sometimes i feel like it's so, not really relevant i don't know yeah kind of an idea and movement that holds that the nation should be incongruent with the state yeah and, and aside from like people like denied a nation kind of like i would say like uh i think like kurds are probably one of the biggest examples they use or like Hmong people like what does that really who does that really serve in the end yeah I guess it's, it helps it, if you're part of a, a larger country and you want your own country. Then like, I could... yeah, like, like Scotland and Catalonia, I was thinking of, yeah. But yeah, the, and the like the ambiguous Kurdistan, Kurdistan area between Iraqi Kurdistan, West Eastern Turkey and Iran and Hmong there, people. There's, around. A, there's an organization called the Unrepresented Nations and Peoples Organization which is basically like made up of a number of different indigenous territories and minorities that want a country within a, a larger country that they're already in. So they all banded together under one country. It's called the unrepresented nation. The UNO. And, and their leader is the Dalai Lama. <laughs> Did they mm-hmm. pay him? The, they paid him the, what, the 20 or 40 K you need to see him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not a, that's a kind of a cheap ticket. Yeah, I was surprised when someone, someone, had, I learned the actual like cost where I forgot wh- who was talking about it. Um, but I was, yeah, it's like, yeah, the reason he's famous is just because like it only costs like 40, 50K to like hire him. He'll show up. Um, obviously, you're going to have to pay more if you want like Bono or Greta Thunberg, whatever as well but like david Hall. yeah he'll just show up and he'll be like yeah i'm your friend you gave me fucking forty five thousand dollars like yeah what's just hand me up whenever you need me to show up again um and all right some... so then we got populism populism not bad it's described as a range of political stances that emphasize the idea of the people in juxtaposition with the elite it is frequently associated with anti-establishment and even anti-political sentiment. I think populism is a good one for for today. You got a lot of different flavors that you can choose from. Yeah, you got uh, left and right. You got you got good memes, good um, internet activity. Um, I would say with the populists. Um, so yeah, I think for the for the young people, it's it's something to check out. Uh, I would. I I, it would be refreshing to not argue about like yeah, like bathroom, like what gender goes into like what bathroom all the time. Dude, that's like such that. a waste. That's such a waste of time. Even yeah, if I'm a such a let's say I'm a right wing conservative, why do I want to spend all my time talking about who goes to what what bathroom? Do you get what I'm trying to say? It's if I'm mm. on the right, I that's a psyop against my own my own group. If I'm on the right, 
they're uh, they're only losing because they're losing because of those like pro life and like yeah those little cultural like, issues yeah yeah it's ridiculous it's stupid it's stupid. the right wingers are so stupid it's crazy they're i i don't know it's like i don't know what's worse modern rap music or modern country they're both just there to to have commercials of interracial dating and make you vote for the democratic party like that's all they exist for i don't know if you've listened to any modern country songs I have, I mean, no, I, I mean, I, uh, like, like uh, Brad like Paisley 90... made a song about Zelensky called I Love You, My Brother Zelensky. Fuck, fuck no. Like, you know, I guess LL Cool J finally came out of the closet as a Hollywood Republican officially. Really? Or whatever. I think that's what, like, according to other people. Um, but like a couple years, I forget who it was, but like 10 years ago, um, like he made some song about like forgive it, like white people and black people, like forgive it, like, you know, a sense yeah, with of, like, getting together yeah. and forgiving, and like, yeah, his his lyrics were like, "If you'll forget, uh, like, if you'll forget, like, my rags and chains, like, as in, like, you know, like diamonds and stuff, I'll forget the whips and chains." I was yeah. just, I was just like, I like when you actually talk. I like, I know people from like the south, from like men, like white people from like Memphis and like other like other parts like the south and like Texas and um. I guess Missouri is kind of like adjacent to that and they don't even know what's going. A lot of them are like, even, even them are, even if they're like Republican voters, they're like country music is really shitty since like the nineties and two thousands. Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let me not go in on Luke Bryan. Uh, the, the, the craziest thing about a Luke Bryan song is that he's not singing to another guy. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, okay, let's continue. After populism, I think that one's probably pretty good. Uh, populism makes us feel good, but I don't know where it gets us. I don't know where it's going to get us. Uh, then we got progressivism, one of the most u- useless ideologies. Progressivism holds that it is possible to improve human societies through political action. As a political movement, progressivism seeks to advance the human condition through social reform. Uh, okay, they're talking about the Age of Enlightenment because it's not the modern one. In it's modern, just saying, yeah, it's just saying like, oh, I'm not a liberal when you're still a liberal when and you live in like oh, Massachusetts. That's that's so exactly the definition more. they gave. Yeah, yeah. They said in modern political discourse, progressivism is often associated with social liberalism, a left-leaning type of liberalism <laughs> in contrast to the right-leaning neoliberalism, combining support for a mixed economy with cultural liberalism. Isn't yeah. that a fun word? Left liberal. That's the fuck. That's the funniest. It's one of the funniest terms. Left left liberal. I didn't realize this topic word. would make me so upset, bro. I didn't realize. Just defining the most popular ones that we have. And like understanding that there, there's a reasonable path to why people choose these ideologies. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it's upsetting when you realize that of, of course they choose these ideologies because this is what's made available to us. It's what's constructed for us. It's just depressing. Um, all yeah. right, keep going. Sorry. <laughs> well, let's just finish it off. Then we have religious political ideologies. Where you just vote based on your religion. I like that one. Um, then we got uh, satirical and anti politics. That's mine, actually. So it says, see also anti politics. Anti politics is a term to describe opposition to or distrust in traditional politics. That's not bad. They say that pro Bolsonaro protesters are anti political, anti politics. I guess I don't know, because when I uh, like when you said it, like I had more of a negative kind of. I was thinking of like Charlie Hebdo. Yeah, 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 yeah. and like similar like French and other like European uh, publications where it's like I don't even know what the fuck they're. It seems like their ideology is like what you just named because it's just like this is just pissing everybody off. It's made yeah. just for the cartoonists' own like vanity, um, uh, and like anti- infamous, that's it. Yeah, yeah, the anti-politics section is really interesting because it's kind of like very metaphysical, right? So they have one called political quietism. So political mm-hmm. quietism is the opposite of Islamism, which says that, you know, Islam, the religion and politics are in- inseparable. 
political quietism is the religiously motivated withdrawal from politics because of the skepticism that mere mortals can establish a true Islamic government. That's kind of crazy, right? Like that's so modest. It's like, I, I'm just, I'm just a simple man. I could never do politics. So I'm a quietist. More people should have that. Attitude. I mean, should have that attitude though. More people yeah. should be, um, this guy's a little bit of a gadfly, but uh, and I don't always agree with him, but he's definitely a lot smarter than most people you'll see uh, talking about the economy. Uh, Giannis Varoufakis, I think you know, mm-hmm. from Greece, from the uh, Tsparis um, government. He worked under them and left early because he didn't fuck with them anymore um, after they sold out to the EU and all that. Um, and yeah, he was basically like, talking about civic duty because that's like the reason i was talking about that kind of earlier and talked um about like conservatism like yeah americans don't have any sense of civic duty especially on in the era of like neoliberalism where all public infrastructure if you you don't have infrastructure around you how do you know how to develop and maintain infrastructure like you just have nothing um and then like uh civic you don't even know that's what your government's supposed to do yeah, and it's like civic duty, you know, like Varoufakis says, like, you shouldn't be rewarded for being the president or being prime minister, being any sort of bureaucrat or government official. Like, that's not a reward. Like, if you do something good and you get, like, congratulated for it, yeah, sure. But, like, it's also your, that's your civic duty. It should be, like, in his words, it should be like taking out the trash. It should be a job nobody wants to do, but they make people do it. Like at some point which uh i mean how you choose those people i don't know but uh yeah that would be a better approach rather than going into politics and just being like aoc instantly cat like not even waiting a few years just instantly cashing in like fuck you obama aoc like just cashing in destroying your grassroots movements um letting the republicans walk all over you to the point where you start voting for the Iraq war and the Iron Dome and like sending sending more uh, uh, Javelin missiles to Ukraine. So yeah. like, yeah, I don't know. Well, so the next uh, one, this is my my founders, Chibu's favorite. It's called syndicalism. <laughs> syndicalism is a revolutionary current in the labor movement that seeks to unionize workers according to their industry and advance their dem- demands through strikes with the eventual goal of gaining control over means of production. Uh, I'm actually pro syndicalist. I'm pro. Syndicalism is cool. I think it could work in in modern uh, industrial times. I mean, if the tech workers uh, were looking at syndicalism a little bit more, maybe they wouldn't be in the situation that they're about to be in with uh, uh, the Silicon Valley bank failure and the um, uh, incipient or incipient uh bank run well so uh, even the the youtubers all the youtubers the content creators what if they formed a union what if the rappers formed a union what if the big bbl models formed a union i think that's actually the right that's the right ideology we need for this new generation right we need a tiktokers union what do you think well, I feel like the uh, issue with unions is scabs um, and obviously like union busing. And I think that's going to be easier in the uh, remote work, freelance work from home uh, generation where anyone can just um, hop online and, and uh, apply for a job. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm always more interested in cooperatives, uh, people forming their own enterprises and, and kind of being a union in that sense. Um, but the the core of it is collective bargaining, which I definitely think is the wave. I mean, you have places like Switzerland that have no minimum wage, but um, you know they have uh, very good wages because of the collective bargaining system that they have in place. So well, I think that's something- of, that's- Speaking of scabs, right? Speaking of strike breaking, we have our final one, transhumanism. 
So transhumanism says is a group of political ideologies that says that we can improve humans through science, technology, and AI. Yeah, I'm pro. Uh, I'm, I'm pro that. The anti-aging research has converted me. CRISPR, you want to talk about inventions that the U.S. has made in the last 20 years? When that shit comes online, as it comes online, it's going to be crazy. So you're talking about CRISPR? Yeah. CRISPR is transhumanism. Well, what about other uh, AI? What if I use AI to improve my output and my personality? As you should, as you should. Yeah, so I think, you know, just to, if we're going to come back and summarize, I think there were three three ideologies that really hit. So we got neoliberalism, we got syndical, syndic, what is it? Syndicate. syndicalism Syndicalism and transhumanism. So I think that's really what we should be, that's really what we can learn how to do. You know, one, improve every aspect of ourselves through life hacking, optimizing, listen to our podcast on 2x speed. That's transhumanism. And then um, we're going to do syndicalism. We're going to create a, a union of content creators, YouTubers, OnlyFans models, right? We're going to get that political power and we're going to use it to implement neoliberalism. Yeah, I think, what do you guys think about that? I, think- I mean, as long as... As long as there's a Carl's Jr. in every national capital in the world, I think we're going to be doing great, especially like if there's lots of great areas you can do like a TikTok dance or like go thrifting nearby. Yeah, it's going to be great for a lot of those people. Syndicalist, transhumanist, neoliberalism. That's where we're at today. That's where we're at nowadays. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, a lot of people, they want to be Bloods, they want to be Crips, you know, they want to be uh, Trinitarios. Nah, nah, that's not the right way. We take accountability as now we're syndical- syndicalist, transhumanist, neoliberals. That's the real set. That's the real set. Adam-22 ain't got nothing on the on the transhumanists, on the transhumanist neoliberals like us. I, I mean, he's he's connected with the neoliberals. I mean, look behind you. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's just he's he's connected with them. But the trans yeah, is he getting? I mean, is Peter is Peter Thiel hooking him up with the blood transfusions? Like, I don't know. Is he well, getting you know he's best friends with Bill Clinton? Bill Clinton is best friends with Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, prob I'm probably the same shit. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I think the syndicalism is really the edge because. We know the the ops. They got the they got the neoliberalism. Uh, it, it, probably got like Rachel Dolezal. You know how she did um, black fishing. Is is that technically transhumanism? Well, that's transhumanist ID pole. That's transhumanist. <laughs> yeah. That's great. We didn't even talk about the war in Ukraine. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, how much? Uh, oh, we're yeah, we're, we're how much wrapping up. We're wrapping up right now. Yeah. So I would say, yeah. yo, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. We we got to talk about all the different ideologies there are, and now we know which is the best ones. So now we love Israel. We love Ice Spice. Okay, we love uh, Zelensky. We love the Oscar nominees. We love Tar. We love everything everywhere all at once, right? And we love neoliberalism. We love neoliberalism and everything everywhere all at once. That's our top two picks yeah. for this week. The best best movie of the year. Uh, shout out shout out to the directors who literally had that movie air in theaters for like seven months and then said like theaters aren't necessary for the future of filmmaking. I think those are really cool producers and as soon as and directors and as soon as you get them on another project they definitely won't show their true colors of like how cheap scam artists they are. If you didn't see it through. I mean, actually I didn't hate that movie that much, but definitely like, no, I really hated yeah, it. I feel, but, you know, I we, feel like we the, way people talk, the way people talk about it. It's like, I didn't, I'm not watching the same fucking movie. It's like, 
that was goofy. Like it wasn't. I like Michelle Yeoh, but that was that was goofy as hell. And it then was, people were like, like it was Rick amazing. And Morty. Yeah, it's Rick and Morty. Yeah, exactly. I heard the same thing from somebody yesterday. It was like, based. I I think they were quoting someone who said that originally. Like it's the Rick and Morty movie. It's Rick and Morty for underperforming Asian women. <laughs> Um, but that's Mindy why K- we love it. Mindy we love it. Rick and Morty. We love Ice Spice. We love uh, Mindy Kaling. We love her, her show Velma. We love Tar. Right. We love Banshees of Inisherin. Yeah, we're we gonna need Mark industry. Pl- we're gonna need industry industry plants. Uh, that's gonna. Of course, you we're know. neoliberalisms now. We we decided there's no other path, so we're not gonna fight it anymore. We're not gonna fight the system. Yeah. We're neoliberals. We're just gonna use transhumanism and syndicalism to get inside. We're just going to inject it into our neoliberalism. And you know we love Ice Spice. We love Netanyahu. Uh, we love uh, Chris Brown, right? Pete Buttigieg. We talked we about Pete before. Buttigieg. We love him. We love East Palestine. I didn't say Palestine. <laughs> we love, uh, yo, Chiba, who else do we love? We got to give some love before we log off. Shout out Kosovo. Yes. Um, we love um, the NSA. Uh, we love the Department of Homeland Security. Love uh, we love yeah. the, um, brave men and women who served at Abu Ghraib. Um, <laughs> we, um, yeah. We love, we love, the, else. Oh, we love yeah. the Saudi family, yeah. royal family, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's a that's a great thing, too. Uh, something I was going to bring up, uh, I guess, if we talk about Ukraine, I might bring this up next time, but... Um, uh yeah cia black sites uh with neo when you got neoliberalism you can set that up anywhere you know you can just go it doesn't matter whether whether you're in denver or whether you're in like eastern rural poland or you're in the middle of turkmenistan like that's a we love traveling we just love yeah it's traveling yeah if you want to travel the world like anthony bourdain did with cia handlers when he was recording his show like as much as i actually kind of like the guy like he did have to do that yeah, there's no, I love, I love Lib- there's no way you're getting into Libya with without uh CIA handbar. I'm sorry. Like so I I love yeah. Bourdain. It's just I wonder why every episode of Parts Unknown was recorded at a CIA black site. <laughs> I know, right? Curious. It seems like. Curious to me. Yeah. And it's mysterious sui- suicide. All right. Uh Bye. that's all for this week. Thanks everybody for listening. Peace. Thank you, Chibu. Thank you, Gandhi. Have a good night.